allemaal en welkom bij Tulip TV. We are in the Van Dusen Botanical Garden and we discovered this wonderful uh, canoe here. It's actually built by Haida artist Bill Reed. Not bad, eh? This is what's coming up. Coming up this week on Tulip TV, we visited the painter Peter John Forme. We joined the Belgian Association in one of their meetings and there's another episode on biking through Holland. All coming up this week on Tulip TV. This program is sponsored by Dutch, the full-color English language magazine about the Netherlands and its people, at home and abroad. Canada to Leave is the online community for the Dutch living in Canada and the Canadians living in the Netherlands. Canada to Leave, wherever you live. Peter John Vorme, you were a Dutch painter in Canada. Yes. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you, Katja de Bok. <laughs> <laughs> I read on your website that you were trained in Australia, you were trained in Montreal. Did you have any training in the Netherlands as yes, well? Yes, yes. I started off in the Amsterdam, in Amsterdam where I was born. I went to the academy there. Then my father decided that I should go over to Australia. I don't really know why, but I went to Adelaide and I did my first degree there, got my uh, Bachelor of Arts. When I came back to the Netherlands, the National Service was waiting for me, the Army. It was compulsory in those days. And I didn't want to go to the Army because I explained that I am an artist, I create. I don't want to learn how to kill. So that's why. And in those days you were trained as a realist painter, realist, I suppose? Yeah. Yeah, I had the last remnants of academic training. I still learned all the superficial muscles in the body. I learned 209 bones, 206 so, bones. So real anatomy you learned. Real anatomy, and I learned a lot of true academic training. And it was useful and a dilemma for me in my life as an artist, but mainly useful. Abstract expressionism. Can yes. you explain to me what that means? Yeah, well, it's, it's, an, it's a term that was used mainly by uh, the Americans, used in the 50s and 40, 40s, maybe not 50s and 60s. It is abstract with expression in it. In other words, sometimes you see some realistic elements in it. So that's basically what it is. Being a painter is incredible because you stand in front of a white canvas Nobody knows yet what's going on there, neither do I. And it's like an adventure each time. And most of the time it works out, other times it fails. So do you sleep with it? Do you, do you take yes. it with you in the bathroom in, when you brush I your teeth? I take it in my mind, I take it all over the place. My ex-wife, poor woman, I had to wake her up in the middle of the night sometimes. I would drag my painting out of my studio, into the bedroom, wake her up, show it to her and wanted her opinion. Was she good? Did, could she, she give you advice? Yeah, she gave me good advice. But my present partner is also very good. <laughs> so, yeah. Tell me a little bit about how, how was this conceived? Was it a commission or? Uh, well, it, yes. Well, what you're looking at here, this is a portrait of Arthur Erickson. Mm -hmm. He is a very famous Canadian architect who did Robson Square and the Wow. courthouse, he did yeah. the Museum of Anthropology. Mm -hmm. 
he stayed here exactly where we're standing mm -hmm. while I was painting his portrait. I did two of him. Yeah. And one of the paintings is in the National Gallery in Ottawa. This one is uh, Abraham Rogatnik. And he was also an architect from UBC and He's also great. a friend of mine. Yeah. And I also had him to co-sign it. And he also posed to me here. Now, I, I heard that you had some famous people buying your portraits, like John Lennon and such? It, it, not a portrait. Uh, he got one of my drawings. Oh, okay. That was a long time ago in Montreal. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. the government of the Netherlands also commissioned yes. something? Yes, I did a kilometer of ceilings for the council of state buildings in Den Haag. And that was, uh, I had actually the privilege of having an interview with the Queen Beatrix. Wow. So that was quite thrilling for me. Yeah, I did all the hallways mm -hmm. in the, the whole council of state building in Den Haag. Uh, total length, one kilometer. And what was the theme? Theme, totally abstract. Yeah. You would hate it. No. I uh, recently had the pleasure to meet a, a, a Dutch-Canadian media artist in Vancouver. His name is Irvin Ostindi. I don't know if you know him. Yeah. He says uh, that being an artist in BC means living in poverty. Would you agree to that? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the poverty, not so much as the financial part that he means. Okay. I agree with that. But it's poverty in genuine culture in BC. BC is beautiful. It's gorgeous, beautiful landscape mountains, everything, but culture, no. Uh, if you want to have real artistic culture, you have to go to the East. Oh, Montreal, yeah. Toronto, or go to the United States, and best yet, Europe. Okay, yeah. and, and you go to the Netherlands twice a year? Twice right a year to yeah. sell my work there. Yeah. 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 Do you have a gallerist, or do you do it yourself? I have lots of galleries mm -hmm. in Holland, yeah. yeah. And out here, the market is terrible for artists, so he was quite right. I yeah. didn't know that. Well, unless you... Put, so uh, many rich people here. Yeah, but you have to paint polar bears, mm. or you have to paint puppies, or birds, or flowers, landscapes, these sort of things will sell, but abstract work, forget it. Okay, yeah. see. Your um, father and your grandfather were violin players, I hear, and I detect a violin in some of your paintings, so... Yes, what yeah. do you? What relationship do you have with the violin? Well, I grew up with violins. Uh, obviously, my grandfather and my father were both professional violinists, so I was already as a young man or a child, I was being played by, by my father. He would hang over the crib. Uh, I have memories of that. And also, uh, violin, classical music was always in my family. Uh, my father tried to teach me how to play violin and I resisted it. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I hated it. And now, when I'm older, I often go back to using my grandfather's violin and I use it as a model for my paintings. I read a statement of you that you compare abstract art to non-textual music. Could you yes. explain that a little bit? Yes, I can. If you listen to classical music, you, you know, for instance, I use that a lot with my students. If you listen to Rachmaninoff, you hear da 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 you know, you get lots of sound, a lot of things, and you get emotions. Or you listen to uh, Johnny Jordan or André Hasses for the Nederlanders, for the Dutch people. Then you listen to the text. That's right. And the text will guide you to whatever you're listening to. And both are valuable to me, but I prefer classical, nonverbal music, and that's how I compare my paintings. Uh, I like the abstract rather than the realism. I do realism because at times I go back to where I started and occasionally I have to do a portrait to make money. So that means if you are working here, is the whole house filled with music? Uh, not when I'm painting, no. Mm. I cannot have any sounds when I paint. Mm. I just don't, I, it disturbs me. You were in Canada so long. What, what do you miss most about the Netherlands? Culture. Mm. And what all the Dutch people will probably say, gezelligheid. I see that. Coziness. That's what a lot of people say. Uh, also, what I enjoy about the Netherlands is the proximity of Germany, France, England. You can go all over the place. Mind you, I am Dutch. I love Holland. 
but I also like BC. So it's sort of double with me. I like BC very much. I like to live here. It's clean. Uh, it was safe for my children to grow up. But I have to go back to Holland at least twice a year. I saw that you taught in Utrecht and you also taught students here in Langara and at UBC. Now, is yes. there a difference between Dutch and Canadian art students? students? No, none. Uh, I also taught for about eight, uh, well, 18 years in the Royal Art Academy in uh, Den Bosch. Mm -hmm. And there, when I started teaching there, there was still academic training, but that soon disappeared. By academic training, I mean people were learning how to make their own paint, how to stretch their own canvases, but that's all gone. But the difference between students, no. Students are the same everywhere. And anything you would like it to do is. next? The, the success and happiness is only on the surface, I think, at most people. I am relatively content with my life, yes. I'm healthy. I've got three beautiful daughters and terrific grandchildren. And I'm saying very close to a very pretty interviewer. <laughs> so <laughs> there are worse things in life. Yeah. Thank you for having me here today. Yes, you're very welcome. This program is sponsored by Dutch, the full-color English language magazine about the Netherlands and its people, at home and abroad. Belgian National Day celebration in Vancouver. The Belgian National Day commemorates the historic event when on July 21st, the first King of Belgium, King Leopold I, took the oath on the Belgian Constitution. The annual celebration of that day is a good occasion to reflect on events of the past year and look forward to challenges for the coming year. As Belgians residing in Canada, I will briefly do likewise, but from a Belgo-Canadian perspective. My name is Anne Lacour. I'm the current president of the Belgian-Canadian Association of BC. We're a cultural association meeting occasionally with the, and getting the uh, occasion for Belgians to meet and uh, talk about their experience in BC, welcome new uh, Belgians in Vancouver. And so we welcome any new members. I have come to Canada 42 years ago for one year, and I fell in love with Vancouver, and I've stayed ever since. And it's a wonderful city, except especially on a day like today when the sun is shining. Hello, my name is uh, Michel Le Spot. I'm a Belgian. Uh, my family used to be Flemish. They've been living in a little town called Verne for 500 years. Then uh, some of my family moved to Brussels and I moved to Canada. So I love Canada, I love Vancouver, and I love this uh, smiling lady looking at me. Thank you very much. I'm here at the Belgian National Day celebration um, with my wife, Jacqueline, who is from uh, Namur. And uh, I'm a little bit further uh, north uh, from Holland, actually up in the Frisian part of Holland. And we're all celebrating together today and uh, singing our national anthems. We have a few. And then, of course, uh, O Canada. Uh, my wife and I are uh, um, expats living here. We go back and forth uh, occasionally. Uh, some of our uh, family is still in Belgium and uh, enjoy very much going back and celebrating and having chocolate and waffles and, uh, and just uh, catching up on family and memories. Hi, my name is Anne Sveldens. 
I have been in Canada for 42 years. Uh, I'm here to celebrate the National Day of Belgium and I'm also the co-founder of this club which was founded in 1976. So we are already going for a long time. Uh, we have at the moment usually between 80 to 120 members and uh, it's usually a very social thing. Uh, the reception is free for all the members and they just love it and so do I. Ik ben een oude Belg, uh, Isabel, dat is mijn naam, Isabel Ronsen, uh, al bijna 35 jaar in Canada en het is altijd heel plezant van hier uh, op de Belgische Nationale Dag uh, te komen, omdat we goede Belgische vrienden ontmoeten en vooral uh, heel lekker uh, Belgisch bier kunnen drinken. <laughs> Zo, de, Belgi de Belgische vrienden ook hier um, bereiden altijd hele lekkere, typische Belgische hapjes. Zo, het is wel uh, altijd heerlijk van hier te komen. En uh, jullie zullen ook moeten komen. Dank u wel. Dag. Mijn naam is uh, Boudewijn Nijens en ik ben dus een van de leden van de Belgische club. En uh, ik zorg voor de bar, heel belangrijk. Belgische bieren vandaag natuurlijk, want het is uh, tenslotte de nationale dag. En uh, onze club telt misschien, ik weet niet juist, misschien rond de 50 families of zo hier in uh, British Columbia. En uh, organiseert zo'n vijf, zes verschillende activiteiten per jaar. Onder meer natuurlijk Sinterklaas, dat is misschien de meest populaire. De Nationale Dag, vandaag natuurlijk. En uh, een paar uh, specialiteit dingen, net zoals een uh, mussels en fries, mussels en uh, musselen en frieten. Um, en uh, ja, eigenlijk, uh, ik weet niet waarom ik hier mee bezig ben, maar ik ben Nederlander. Maar uh, mijn vrouw is Belgische, dus ik moet meedoen natuurlijk, hè. solidair zijn. Honorary Council uh, of Belgium in Vancouver, but I'm first uh, here today as a member of the Belgium Association. I'm very happy that uh, this association continues to celebrate the Belgium National Day here in, uh, in Canada, uh, in Vancouver. And uh, it's great to see all the members there. We have generation of members. Some members are here for 40 years and we have new members. It's a small association, but still, uh, it's very friendly, very at ease uh, with itself, and they are very happy to to be in Vancouver, but at the same time to celebrate their national identity. And uh, so, um, it, for us, it's always a, a great day, even if we are not a huge number, uh, because a lot of people go take the vacation to go back in Belgium and everything. So. Um, we never know how many people will be, but we're so happy to see such a nice mix. So, very happy day, and even with uh, the, the bad weather we had this morning, we end up to have a great weather, which I always say, in fact, we are 21st of July in Vancouver, it's always nice. Brussels is another matter, but in Vancouver, it's always been very nice. So we're all happy to, to, to be here to celebrate. Thank you. Canada to Leave is the online community for the Dutch living in Canada and the Canadians living in the Netherlands. Canada to Leave, wherever you live. This program is sponsored by Dutch, the full-color English language magazine about the Netherlands and its people, at home and abroad. Today we're checking out Harlem, which is the center of Holland's bulb growing district and has been given the name Blomenstad, or that's been interpreted as Blooming City. And for that reason, it's considered one of Holland's most beautiful green market squares. Join us as we check out the Tyler's Museum, which is the first and oldest museum in Holland. Hi. Hi, I'm Sophie. How are you? Hi, Sophie. Hello. Well, that's a tradition. I will paint on the flower. Oh, thank you. 
Before we go in, I just wanted to show you the KLM House number 86, which is the Tyler's Museum in Harlem. Question of the day, the Tyler's Museum is... Go online and you can answer the question to win a grand prize. Well, uh, welcome to Tyler's Museum. Tyler's Museum, yeah. beautiful. It's beautiful. It's the first and oldest museum in Harlem. Uh, open to the public since 1784. And unique to this museum is the historical presentation largely unchanged since the 18th and 19th centuries. <laughs> and it's like a voyage through time. So it's an arts and sciences museum, so we, what can we expect to see here? Uh, obviously there's lots of rocks here on display, really cool yeah. old things. Yeah, it's really a museum of the, of the Enlightenment, so you find arts and science, there are minerals, uh, scientific instruments, there's art, uh, fossils, favorite room in the Tyler's Museum. It's a special wing that only really cool people have access to and we were lucky enough to get to check it out. We have the astronomy section over here. We've got German and Italian language and sociology books over here, mathematics, and all kinds of crazy instruments all over the place. It's really unbelievable. Hey guys, I'm in the center of Harlem, one of the city squares, and a typical dish here in the Netherlands is uh, herring, and not just any herring, but raw herring, and I pride myself on my ability to tolerate some kind of sort of crazy foods, so we're going to give this uh, Ponce Herring Sparte Crown, which means best herring in Harlem, a shot. Good. Good. Okay, so here's the verdict. If you're gonna have some herring in uh, in in Holland, uh, yeah, come here. It's ain't bad. It's got that nice greasy sardine kind of fatty flavor, which I, I happen to like. Sure, with some onions and some pickles. Not too fishy. It's like sushi. You'll be fine. We're at Jopen Church, which is a brewery in Harlem, and is actually housed in the church that's right behind us. It's an old old chapel that now makes beer. And they actually um, use recipes from the Middle Ages, from the 1400s and 1500s, um, and uh, they make all the beer right here on location and sell it in their restaurant and bar. Hi. Hi, so we're here inside Jopen Church, and I'm here with Chebe, who works here, and he's going to tell us a little bit about the brewery that is inside this amazing old church. Yes, it's a brewery in Harlem, Holland. And here we brew our Jopen beer. Uh, it's a beer which we found, uh, recipes we found in uh, like 1407, 1501. And from there on we went, we went to brew further beers. And now today we have 19 different beers on draft. Uh, and what must it takes about three weeks? So the brewer starts uh, at day one and it takes him about eight hours to make it from the scratch till the becoming beer. And then it goes into the big tanks and the brewer doesn't have to do anything with it. It just checks upon if, it, if it's a bit like what he wants to be. And the temperature goes down to 70, 80 degrees. And it will rest there for like uh, two or three weeks. And then we have the almost finished project, project. So the whole process is about two or three weeks, depending on what kind of beer we make. Would you like something to drink? I'll uh, open, maybe? I'd love to try. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So well, here it is, direct from the tank. Cheers! Cheers, thank you! Mmm, <laughs> it's really good! Yeah?
This program is sponsored by Dutch, the full-color English language magazine about the Netherlands and its people, at home and abroad. That's it for this week. Don't forget, if you want to support us, go to our website and follow the links. I'm Katja de Bok for Tulip TV. Have a good evening. Je hebt getraind, heb ik gezien, in, in realism. Yeah. Oh jee, dan hebben we dat alles in Nederlands gedaan. Shoot. Yes, they are. We want it in English. Yeah, I oh. just did it automatically. Okay, good, yeah. good, good. We'll start yeah. again. Yeah. We'll do it all in English. Je moet het volgende keer wel zeggen.